Alrighty. Hmm. Nodding his head, he passed out. He closed his eyes and started presently. He began to snore. Yeah, that's about it. Okay, developments, part one. We interrupt this program, A.T. Hagen, section title, the developments, part one. Oh, okay. Jersey said to stop acting crazy, like doing the bottle thing last night. And then I'm not supposed to say anything about the farm being funny. <laughs> Man, I don't want to get it all over my books and tablets, so stop cracking myself up. Oh, it's been a long day. Oh, all right. Enough tomfoolery. So I hope you like the uh, Citizen Kane thing. That's pretty weird. But I finally figured out the. I'm not finally. I'm not sure, but it's interesting. There was definitely a connection between William Randolph Hearst and Rosebud, who he spent most of his life with. So it's funny that nobody ever says that. Two points for me. <laughs> All right, but I do think there's a connection, the firmament thing. But who knows. John pitched another fork full of manure-laden bedding out of the gold stall into the loader on the tractor. Now, I've got to stop reading ahead because I'm telling you, this is really difficult to bother to read this. No, because it confuses me. I'm like, man, I've read this one. Uh, and then I'll go three or four sections. I'm like, no, I read that one. I read that one. I read that one. And i got to go back to the my YouTube channel and figure out which ones I, what was the last one I actually did read. All right. Across the way, his dad began to spread fresh bedding into the horse's stall. Outside, it was raining again, turning into freezing sleet as they continued to receive precipitation from the cold front that had stalled on top of them. When the last of the used bedding had been forked out and replaced, they hated the animals. Their evening chores completed, the men donned their hats and slickers and headed back to the house. The ground was crunchy with ice. Well, we knew it would be cold early this year, John muttered, but I was hoping it would hold off a little longer. It'll likely freeze hard tonight. We don't normally get frost until next month. At the rate we're going, it'll start to snow soon. His dad stepped up on the porch and began taking his slicker off. Looks like this sleet is starting to stick. We'll need to come back out and examine the greenhouse in another hour or so to see if the ice buildup is going to be a problem. Probably ought to make another leak check, too. I'm not sure if that stove stack will take a lot of ice, so we'll need to make sure the heater fire doesn't go out before the storm quits. Nodding his head, his son said, Thank God we finished the walls and roof yesterday morning before the temperature started dropping. I'd hate being out here trying to work in this stuff, and I'd hate having to postpone work waiting on it to pass. You want to work on the tray racks after we check on the ice buildup? Robert nodded acknowledgement and opened the door to step inside. In the kitchen, Melinda and Heather were readying supper for the table and bickering between themselves when they came into the room. Melinda, it's none of your business, but out. Mel's jaw was set with a determined look on her face and shot back. Heather, you're being stupid. When she saw her father and grandfather come in, she looked up, straightened out her face and said, Hi, Daddy. Hi, Grandpa. Supper will be ready in about five minutes. Aunt Lisa called a little while ago and said she'd be home in time to sit with us. Good, her father said. She should get here before the roads start beginning to slick over. Uh, she should get here before the roads begin to slick over with ice. Sure hate to see her rack up her car the day after we finally started getting fuel again. Call us when it's ready. I'll be in the living room. Yes, sir. The two men walked on through the kitchen to the living room to where to warm themselves at the wood stove. Brittany was there folding clothes. She hurriedly wiped her eyes when they came through the door and returned to her chore. It seemed to John that she'd been crying, so he asked, Britt, is anything wrong? The girl shook her head and said, no, sir, and continued folding, offering no other explanation. Her guardian could see that she was upset but was unsure of whether 
he should press the matter, so he decided to table it until he could speak with Lisa in private on how to proceed. After the trauma of her mother and probably her father being murdered and herself so nearly raped, he was sure that she would be dealing with reactions to the incident for a long time to come, but helping a 12-year-old girl to come to terms with it was outside of his experience. He resolved that he, Lisa, and Anne would discuss the matter some more the coming weekend. Until a couple of days ago, she seemed to be coping as well as could be expected, but lately she seemed hurt and dejected, and he could not understand why. The evening news was on the television, so he started watching. A local anchor person was at the new NRC camp being built on the west side of Jacksonville. While not appearing to be under military discipline, it did appear to be fairly clean and well organized. The camp residents, residents were all individuals who had volunteered to join the NRC and they looked reasonably clean and well fed. Several discussed the work they were doing salvaging materials from the devastated area and several shots were shown of crews loading lumber and structural steel onto trucks. The only heavy equipment shown was trucks and cranes lifting loads onto them. A spokesperson said that shortage of fuel kept other useful heavy equipment from being employed. The same spokesperson also talked about how they were getting upwards of 50 people a day applying for the NRC at this one camp alone, which would soon lead to them, lead them to spin off satellite camps nearer to outlying salvage areas. John nodded at the TV and said to his dad, Well, looks like a cross between basic training and working for a construction company. Grandpa did a spell in the CCC back during the Depression, didn't he? I wonder what he'd think of our new version. His dad tucked his shirt into his pants and replied, Probably he was glad he was getting three hot meals a day and a dry place to sleep. What they're doing there can't be any harder than trying to stay alive farming in rural Georgia in the 20s and 30s. When the war came and he enlisted, he said basic training was a lot like living at home. And he got paid better to boot. Probably true. Probably ate a whole lot more too. The local time passed and the news segued into national topics. Treasury Secretary Smith today confirmed for the first time that the Treasury and the Federal Reserve Board of Governors was consulting with Congress about a possible recall of all U.S. currency in order for new bills to be issued at a new valuation. He declined to say what the proposed rate of exchange between the old and new bills would be, but internal sources who wish to remain anonymous tell us that rates of 5 to 1, 10 to 1, even 20 to 1 have been proposed. Secretary Smith states a full report will be given if and when a bill is actually introduced for legislative consideration. Robert grimaced at the news. They did that during the Depression, too, when they recalled gold coins. Haven't seen a Social Security check since the impact, and <clears throat> now they want to tell us that $10 will only be worth a dollar. In other economic news, the House-Senate Conference Committee resolved the final details of the National Reconstruction Corps bill <clears throat> and sent it back to the floor of both houses for a final vote where it is expected to pass. Major features of the bill are the absorption of assets from insurance companies that have failed as a result of being unable to pay out claims resulting from the asteroid strike and the resulting aftermath, making the government responsible for those claims, <clears throat> but limiting the amount of each payout by claim type, authorizing the government to salvage materials for resale from the devastated areas, extending the length of time that the devastated areas will be under direct federal administration, Phasing out, phasing out of all evacuee and displaced person camps in favor of incorporating them into the NRC. <coughs> A strong rumor is making it through the halls of Congress in Denver that the NRC involuntary draft measure was struck from the final bill, but we have not been able to confirm this at the present time. In other national news, the Supreme Court handed down several rulings today. One such was their decision that the missing members of Congress who were lost in the impact aftermath shall be appointed by their state legislatures according to the population distribution of the last census in 2000. A part of this ruling also ordered that another national census must be immediately undertaken so that appropriate reapportionment re changes can be made in time for the 2004 elections. This new census and the resulting reapportionment is expected to radically change the balance of power within Congress 
as the eastern seaboard states lose House districts. <clears throat> a consequence of these changes will be the strengthening of California's power within Congress as well as the state of Texas. Heather came into the room and said, Uncle John, Mr. Horn, Brittany, supper's ready. Y'all come to the table. Internationally, confused reports are reaching Western Europe of open strife breaking out in several northern Russian provinces as the provincial governors and the central government vie for political control. Tensions are being exacerbated by a depressed fall harvest and early onset of winter weather and difficulties in field distribution. Several provincial governors are reportedly claiming the central government is deliberately holding up food and fuel shipments in an effort to pressure them. End of that section. If I can get it to shut off the first time.